Hello and welcome back. So in the end of the last episode we started building this wave management system. Um, you'll notice when you go into play mode the wave 1 text never disappears. It, it's always just there. Um, so to get rid of that we're going to go to canvas, wave counter, and then just delete all the text. Then when we start the game, when we hit Q... Oh, actually I commented that out. Um, but before we were using Q to summon the next wave. So go ahead and open up the wave management script. And we're going to need something to keep track of the enemies in this wave. And I'm just going to put them in an array. Public game object. Actually, let's use an array list. And we'll call this enemies, or enemies list, enemy list, there. And it doesn't like that for some reason, so let's go ahead and save this and see what's broken. The non-generic type system.collections.arraylist cannot be used with the type arguments. Alright, so it doesn't like what I put here. You, I guess you can't typecast it. So now we just have a generic array list that will hold our enemies. And we're going to want to drop in the enemy at the beginning. Um, so th this is our final copy of Axon. We can just duplicate him as many times as we want. Let's make sure we update the prefab for that. So just click apply. And then we can delete this guy out of the scene. <clears throat> I'm going to re-enable my directional light so that it's a little bit easier to go around the map. And now I want to create some spawn points. And um, by default, we'll just sort of drop them in wherever. Um, later, we, later, if we want to, we can like put them behind cover and then only access those spawn points if the enemy can't see them. That way enemies are only spawning behind the player. Um, that's an option, but for now I'm, I'm just going to keep it dead simple. Create game object, 3D object cube, and just make sure it's above the ground. And I'm going to scale it up so it's about the size of one of the axon creatures. Something like that. Alright, so now I delete the axon that I just dropped in. And this will be called spawn point. One word. Now I'm going to drag that down into prefabs. And I'm going to create a new folder called spawning system within our scripts folder. And I'm just going to drag wave management into that. And then within spawning system, right click, create C sharp script, and spawn point. And I think I like the way that looks better with a capital P, so just to keep things consistent, I'm going to rename my spawn point to spawn uppercase point. And then drag the spawn point script onto that. Open that up. And as soon as the game starts, we're going to get a reference to the mesh renderer and hide the mesh so that the player can't see it. Um, but, but we want it to be visible within the scene view, um, just, just to make things easier for ourselves. So to get a reference to the mesh renderer, we can say uh, mesh renderer render equals get component mesh render like that and then we can just say renderer dot enabled equals false so if I did that correctly this should disappear when I start the game and it worked there's no block there all 
Um, one thing I just noticed that's, that I don't like is when when I hit escape, the reticle is still here. Um, I would rather that disappear. So I'm going to I'm gonna fix that really quick. Um, that would be in scripts, menu control. And I'm just going to create a public game object reticle. And when we resume the game, active is true, and active is false. And then in management, in our hierarchy, uh, menu controller needs a reference to the reticle game object. So now when we pop when we pause and unpause the game, we'll just be enabling and disabling the reticle like that. Easy enough. And it's, it's also shooting when we're in the menu. And to fix that, go into the basic gun script. And... When we're checking if we can shoot, we can just say and time dot time scale not equal to zero. So if the game's paused, time scale is zero, and then we're not going to do anything in this branch. So go back into play mode just to test that out. And now he won't shoot in pause mode, but he can still look around, which I kind of like. All right, so now leave leave play mode. And what was I doing before? Uh, yes, the spawning system. So let's let's close these with the middle mouse wheel. Uh, radical controller, first person controller. All right, so now we just have our spawn point script, and when the game starts, it hides itself. And now let's open up the wave controller. So Control Shift T to bring down this menu, and then W wave manager all right so now um, we, we should probably just start the first wave automatically after a certain amount of time so I'm just I'm just gonna do that from the start function so we have void start and I'm just gonna invoke um, So we can use this invoke and pass in a method name like change wave. Um, but the problem with that is that we can't also pass in a parameter. Um, so I'm going to create a new function. And we're just going to call this start game. And that's going to call change wave with a value of 1. And then we can put start game here. So now what this is doing is the scene loads, we call invoke start game, and this is going to wait one second and then it's going to call this method. And then this is going to call this method with a value of 1. Um, the reason we had to create this this secondary sort of like middleman is because we can't pass in a 1 here. So we, we just had to hard code it here. Anyway, um, I hope that made sense. Now when we start the game, it should wait one second and then display the wave 1 text. Like that. And I think it came out too fast. So I'm going to delay this by about 3 seconds. To about 3 seconds. And then I'm going to change the text interval. And you'll notice if I change it here, it's not going to do anything because it's already been serialized within the inspector. And see, it's still set to 1. So we have we can't control this. Since it's a public value and it's already serialized in the inspector, we can't control it with the script anymore. We, we have to set starting values here. 
All right, so after three seconds, wave one pops up, and it remains for three seconds, which I quite like. Um, so I'm going to wrap this video up here. In the next video, I will get back into spawning the enemy.